we take it for granted sometimes when we hear this wonderful message that God so loved the world that we're included in that world that God loved and continues to love and allows us in our faith to realize that in this world we don't journey alone. There's this great God that loves us and his son Jesus to could be our guide to walk with us. And that's just something none of us should take for granted. Well, I have to confess, uh, all week long I was um, kind of concerned that I shamed people last week. And rarely do I walk away from services and sermons feeling that this, this burden, like I singled someone out and picked on an age group, which is what I did. So for folks that were not in worship last week, I asked people that were under 25 to look at a video. It's like 20 seconds. And it was a video of Mick Jagger dancing like a chicken. And for the people under 25, I asked them to identify who that character was. No one under the age of 25 knew who Mick Jagger was. They had no idea that was Mick Jagger dancing. And you know, if they can't recognize dinosaurs, um, I shouldn't call that out. <laughs> that being said, I thought, well, you know, let me be equitable and give a quiz to people that are over 65. So you have an opportunity to look at a video and no one under the age of 65 can respond and yell out who this person is. So I'm just gonna see if you recognize this person. So Ryan, if you don't mind, and again, only people over 65 can yell out who this person is. Someone said Oprah. <laughs> Crickets. Crickets, crickets, you need your glasses. <laughs> All right, anybody under the age of 65? Rihanna, absolutely. Now, if you did not know who Rihanna was in this moment, you will hear about her next weekend because she will be responsible for the halftime show at the Super Bowl. And what's so remarkable to me about Rihanna is she's 34 years old, she's a, a billionaire, and she really cares about the human family. In fact, the Harvard Foundation awarded her as a humanitarian of the year a couple of years ago. She has a skincare line that helps people take care of their, their bodies and their beings. And what's impressive to me about her is she has this one philanthropic push named after her grandparents, Clara and Lionel. It's the Clara Lionel Foundation. And what she does is she provides funding in the area of climate justice and climate resilience in the Caribbean. She's originally from Barbados. She's given back to her homeland, home region, one of the most impoverished areas of the Western Hemisphere. And Rihanna chooses to be generous in that area with climate justice, kind of making sure there aren't toxic dumps by the neighborhoods of black and brown people, and climate resilience, just kind of making sure when those storms hit the Caribbean, and typically every other year there's a major storm in that area, there are ways that people can recover and be able to move forward. So it's just an impressive spirit of generosity. Well, I highlight her story because sometimes when you and I see celebrities being generous, it inspires us to be generous. Rihanna, with her gain, material gain, could impact a variety of spaces, and yet she chooses a couple. Same is true for us. We may have our material gain. We have an opportunity to make choices to alleviate the pain of material poverty. So while most of us, well, I would say 100% of us may not become billionaires in this lifetime, we do have an opportunity to make a difference in this world as God nudges us to integrate our faith to responsible choices. And I'm highlighting her story today and responding to poverty today because when we come to the Lord's table, it's really about you and I paying attention to Jesus' mission statement when he says, I bring good news to the poor. 
And one of those areas happens to be how you and I respond with our gain to make a difference in this world and alleviate poverty. So in that spirit, the Bible isn't kind of clear cut on how we respond in solving these challenges. And you and I both know, even as we look at political engines and different ways that political parties understand alleviating suffering in this world, there's a mixed bag of solutions. And so the Bible is very clear that this is very complex, and yet there are ways that you and I can make a difference in this world. From Isaiah, we hear a story that I will highlight from chapter 58. And it's around the practice of ritual fasting. Now, when many of us think about fasting, we may fast a food for a day or a week or, or a month as a spiritual practice, or we may give up a particular beverage. For example, there's a trend now in America known as dry January, where people do not indulge. And some of you are shocked that you've got like, that's a thing? Yes. <laughs> You can't go dry in January. Well, the local wine shop in my neighborhood is trying to generate some business because of dry January. So they had this advertisement that says that they, they are a recovery center for people experiencing dry January. <laughs> and the place is packed. It's pretty clever. But for most of us, we think about fasting. It's like a food here, a beverage there. Well, in the Old Testament, when people were fast, especially people from an exile community, their fasting included being away from work. They would absolutely shut down their labor in order to curry favor with God. Now, if you had means and you could afford to have a unpaid holiday, that was wonderful for you. But if you were poor and you needed the means from that job that someone implored you to do and it provides shelter and housing, it became complicated for someone to pursue ritual fasting in the name of God when it was denying you of shelter or denying you of food. So it became this, this issue with the people of God, how do, how do we follow God? How do we respond to God? How do we honor God with our fasting and yet not create a system of oppression or exploitation? And so God weighs in on the matter because literally the people with and without would squabble with one another about the spiritual practice of fasting. So in Isaiah chapter 58, Verse 1 through 9, here's how the response is given about what God expects with fasting. This is the kind of fast day I'm after. To break the chains of injustice, get rid of exploitation in the workplace, free the oppressed, counsel debts. What I'm interested in seeing you do is sharing your food with the hungry, inviting the homeless poor into your homes, putting clothes on the shivering ill-clad, being available to your own families. Do this and the lights will turn on and your lives will turn around at once. Your righteousness will pave your way. The God of glory will secure your passage. Then when you pray, God will answer. You'll call out for help and I'll say, I am here. So God promises to respond to us as we respond in generosity and alleviating the suffering of the poor. God makes it very clear there's no room in the practice of religion for exploitation of people. Because when we exploit people, we don't honor their human dignity. And so in this premise of what it means to, to honor people for the wages that they earn, for making certain that we don't have cumbersome levels of, of debt that allows a person to live on meager means, what God invites us to do is somehow integrate our faith in such a way that we do respond to this message of love and caring for the poor. 
Now, because many of us are familiar with the, the New Testament, we will sometimes turn to this scripture where Jesus says, well, the poor will always be with us. And sadly, for many of us, when we hear this quote from Jesus, we take it out of context, and it sometimes releases us from the burden of responsibility to do something. Well, biblical scholars have determined that when Jesus said the poor will always be with us, he was taken out of context. That when Jesus said the poor will always be with us, biblical scholars have been able to point out that there were some other words that Jesus may have spoken that were not captured by the gospel writers. The belief is when Jesus said the poor will always be with us, he was actually quoting Moses in Deuteronomy. And as the people of God were planning to go into the promised land, as the people of God were planning to have their status change from being wanderers to having a land of, of milk and honey, Moses reminded God's people that the poor would be among them And Moses went on to say, we have a responsibility to share. Moses said these words because God revealed to Moses that in this new land, it all belonged to God. And because they were stepping into this new land, what belonged to God belongs to others, not only to God's people. So for you and I, we always have to make this choice. How with the choices that we make given the fact that most of us will never become millionaires or billionaires, why do we make choices to honor the poor that are near us? What are the responses that we can do to override exploitation in this world? And I got to tell you, here at Trinity, we try to make it real simple for you to see how you can participate. So in your bulletin, I'm going to call attention to this. If you don't mind, find your bulletin. Find your bulletin because for three weeks in a row, we've had a promotion for We Don't Waste. We Don't Waste is a ministry partner of ours that helps to respond to food scarcity situations and food security situations. And all you have to do is reach out to Stephen, list it with his email address, look at your calendar, And it may be a very easy step for you to respond to the needs of people that are hungry. We try to make it incredibly simple for you as a church to to realize there's some ways that you and I can respond. And even as you come downtown and you drive past encampments of people living on the streets, I want you to know that Trinity tries to create opportunities to respond to our housing needs with our Housing for All Ministries. On our website, it's a click away for any and all of us to respond. I want you to feel that you're doing something when this church hosts a ministry four days a week that provides a hot meal for our unhoused neighbors. It's responding to the gospel. So this morning, as we come to the Lord's table, I want you to do this evaluation in your heart. What is the something that you can do? What is the way that you can somehow respond to the needs of those that are poor? Because when I invite you to think about integration in your lives, I'm calling out what the prophet called out. Isaiah pointed out to people of God that they may worship God, they may have their fast motivated for a variety of reasons, but worshiping God has to connect with the will of God. And when that connection is the will of God and worshiping God is visible, we see people, we see the poor, we see our resources, and we see that we can do something. Last week, I introduced in worship this concept of of house rules. And even in the scripture I read today, the prophet highlights a house rule. 
He says and challenges people to, to be available to your own families. Maybe that's a starting point for some of us. At least for the megastar Rihanna, that connection with her family, wanting to honor her grandparents with a philanthropic thrust for climate justice, climate resilience. It started somewhere before she became a star. And for most of us, it's in our homes where we can start making a difference, just kind of creating a value that we see people, poor people, not as people that should be forgotten or ignored, but people like us made in the image of God. So in that spirit, I want to invite uh, Desiree and Joe to to share a, a song with us. It just really challenges all of us to just get a, a step closer, a step closer to integrating our faith. Because the truth is, when you and I live out our faith and faith, we, we, we walk in directions without sight, sometimes we bump into realities. We bump into our hypocrisy, we bump into our judgment, we bump into our fear. In this psalm, it's designed to just kind of encourage you, just to take one step closer to integrating your life with Jesus, with the choices you can make to love and care for, especially the poor. <laughs> 